welcome and greetings to all. I am Shen Long Pen Dragon, the Lore Master. So, ladies and gentlemen, as always, a quick disclaimer here. The following is a non profit video. I do not own any of the images or the story in this video. The credit for these belong to their original sources. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me today for the uh, second installment in the Catholic Military Orders series. Uh, once again, I have to apologize for the delays in getting this video out to you. I have been absolutely swamped by work, and as I'm sure you can understand, I really needed to prioritize my PhD over doing these videos for you, so I really do apologize. Hopefully, I'll be able to get another video out to you uh, relatively soon, but I'm not going to make any promises because, again, I know that I'm going to be very busy over the next few months, and probably, in fact, I'm probably going to be busy for the next year and a half. So hopefully I'll be able to get some videos out to you, but I'm not going to make any promises as to timelines. So, ladies and gentlemen, this time we are going to be covering the Knights Hospitalier, whereas the previous video was on the Knights Templar. The Hospitaliers are arguably the second most well known of all the Catholic military orders, and they are certainly the longest serving of the original five. So, ladies and gentlemen, in the same fashion as when I did the Templar video, I'm going to be covering a relatively short summary of the Hospitaliers' history here, starting with their origins and then ending with their modern day successors. I want to point out though that I'm not going to be covering any conspiracy theories surrounding the Hospitaliers, nor am I going to cover any of their successors which are not officially recognized. So just a very, very quick backstory here before I get into the video proper. The Hospitaliers, or to give them their full name, the Order of the Knights of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem, was founded in the Kingdom of Jerusalem in the 12th century. They are most commonly known for wearing the black outfit sporting a white cross, which you can see in this video. But as you can see, many of the brothers shown here are also wearing red with a white cross, and I'm going to be covering as to why in this video. And as I've already said, they are arguably the second most well known of the Catholic military orders, and they are definitely by far the longest uh, serving, or at least they have the longest running history of all the original five. In order to truly understand the origins of the Knights Hospitalier, we have to go back in time before the launch of the First Crusade and the establishment of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. In the year 603, Pope Gregory I, also known as Gregory the Great, shown here in the top image, commissioned the Ravenet Abbot Probus to build a hospital in the city of Jerusalem. And in the year 800, Emperor Charlemagne, shown in the bottom image here, had the hospital enlarged and added a grand library. However, just over 200 years later, in 1009, Jerusalem underwent an attack uh, from the Islamic forces of the Fatimid Caliph Al-Hakim b. Amir Allah. During this attack, the hospital and 3,000 other buildings were destroyed. However, in 1023, the Caliph al-Az Zahir allowed the hostel to be rebuilt by merchants travelling from Italy. Later, this uh, hostel was serviced by the Order of the St. Benedict, as in fact it had been built on the original site of the monastery of St. John the Baptist. And this is where we actually get the hospitalier's full name of the Order of Knights of the Hospital and St. John of Jerusalem. I also do want to apologize for my absolutely horrible pronunciation of those Islamic names. Um, if you 
Ladies and gentlemen, know the correct pronunciation for those names, then please do feel free to correct me in the comment section. Following the success of the First Crusade, a monastic hospitalier order would be created in 1113 by the blessed Gerard de Martigues. During his time as Grand Master, he would acquire both territory and revenues throughout the newly established Kingdom of Jerusalem and in lands out with. The original hospice established in 1023 would be expanded on the, under the hospitalier's control into a significantly larger infirmary near the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The order's original mission was primarily care for pilgrims and the injured. However, it soon became apparent that preventing injury rather than curing it was preferable, and as such, they began escorting pilgrims with military force. During its formative years, the order established three different groups that its brothers were separated into. These consisted of the military brothers, the brothers the Thermorans, and the brothers chaplains. Now in this image, ladies and gentlemen, we can see both the red and the black uniforms worn by the hospitaliers. Now the original uniform was black with a white cross. However, in 1130, Pope Innocent II gave the order its new red and white uniforms. On both types of uniform, we can see them sporting a white cross with eight points. This eight-pointed cross would go on to be called the Maltese cross, and you'll see why a little bit later in the video. So as stated earlier, ladies and gentlemen, the order's original mission was primarily medical care within the city of Jerusalem, particularly focused on helping pilgrims and any other one who had been injured. However, they very quickly saw the need to protect pilgrims on the road, preferring uh, protection over actually curing injured. This need was brought to a head in 1118 when the Grand Master or Master of the Hospital organized his brothers into a new militia force and offered their services to King Baldwin II of Jerusalem. This new military arm of the order would prove itself to be a valuable military asset and actually joined their Templar counterparts, becoming one of the most formidable military orders in the Holy Land. It was in 1153 where they particularly distinguished themselves against the forces of the Egyptian Caliphate during the Siege of Ascalon, where the order, along with the Christian armies, actually managed to seize the fortress at Ascalon and further expand the newly forming Kingdom of Jerusalem. So, ladies and gentlemen, please do forgive me uh, for this very short tangent. I just want to talk a little bit more about the military uniform of the order shown here. Now, as I've already said, it was Pope Innocent II that gifted the order its red uniform with the white cross in 1130. However, in 1248, Pope Innocent IV approved a new standard military dress for the order shown here in this image, which was consisting of a red surcoat sporting this white cross, rather than the more traditional closed cape that the order had worn before. His successor, Pope Alexander IV, then decreed that only brother knights would be allowed to wear this red uniform, whereas all other members of the order would continue to wear the original black regardless of whether they were military personnel or not. The knights that wore this red uniform would actually often also wear a black mantle over the top of the surcoat, 
uh, mantle is a cape-like or cloak-like uh, garment. You've probably often seen it quite often in movies, etc., etc. At the height of the Kingdom of Jerusalem's power, the Hospitality Order held seven great forts and 140 other estates, the largest of which was Karak de Xavier and Magarat in modern-day Syria. During the 12th century, the order was also given land in Europe, specifically within England, Ireland, and then briefly they were able to hold land in what at the time was called the Banet of Severum, which was a border province in the Kingdom of Hungary, adjacent to the Second Bulgarian Empire in modern-day Romania. However, as we know, the uh, Kingdom of Jerusalem's time was fast approaching a close, for in the year 1187, the city was taken by the forces of Salahaddin. The Saracens would then go on to completely destroy the Kingdom of Jerusalem in the year 1291, when they took the city of Acre. With the fall of the kingdom, the Hospitalia Order fled to the Kingdom of Cyprus, which had uh, by this point been able to separate themselves from the Byzantine Empire. While lodging in Cyprus, the Grand Master, uh, Guillermo de Valette, decided that he wanted to have a true home for the Hospitaliers, rather than just uh, mooching off Cyprus, as it were. And as such, he decided that his target for this home would be the island of Rhodes in modern day Greece. In the year 1310, Gilman's successor, Falquez de Vimeret, executed the plan to take Rhodes from the Byzantine Empire. After a four year campaign, the order was successful in securing itself a new home along with the neighbouring islands including the Alatonian port of Helicarnesis and Castiel Orizo Island. Two years later, the Hospitaliers would obtain much of the properties from the Templars after they had been dissolved by Pope Clement V. In the year 1334, Andronicus of the Byzantine Empire would lead his Turkish auxiliaries in an invasion to retake Rhodes. While the invasion was unsuccessful, 30 years later this force was able to take the city of Samaria on the Alatonian coast, uh, which had initially been won in the crusade of 1344. In fact it was actually the Hospitaliers that took this specific city. The city uh, itself would eventually be lost in 1402 when it was taken by Tamir, the Turco-Mongolian founder of the Timurid Empire. Fearing that they would lose their position, the order would go on to build Vetronium Castle, also called Bodrum Castle, reinforcing its ramparts with pieces of the uh, destroyed mausoleum at Halicarnassus, which in fact was actually one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. As the 15th century continued, the order often found itself clashing with Barbary pirates, also known as the Ottoman Corsairs. And in 1444, the forces of the Sultan of Egypt invaded Rhodes. This was followed by a second invasion by the Mehmed, by Mehmed the Conqueror in 1480. Both invasions were successfully fought off. However, in 1522, Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent deployed a massive force of 100,000 men. It may have even been double this, however, this is unlikely. 
under Grand Master Philippe Vellers, the Ale Adam, the Hospitaliers, dug in and were well fortified, despite only bearing 7,000 men at arms. They were able to hold off the invaders for over six months. Impressed by the hospitaliers, the Sultan allowed the survivors to withdraw to the island of Sicily. Despite the defeat, Pope Adrian VI was inspired by the hospitaliers' brave defence and regarded Philip Villers as an extremely valiant and a war commander awarding him the title of the Defender of the Faith. In 1530, desiring to cede the order with a new home, Pope Clement VII, who himself was in fact a Hospitalier Knight, reached an agreement with Emperor Charles V of the Holy Roman Empire, a man who also held the title of the King of Spain and Sicily the Archduke of Austria, Lord of the Netherlands, and Duke of Burgundy. Charles V was arguably one of the most powerful men in Europe, if not the most powerful man in Europe at the time, and he was really not someone to cross. The agreement was that in exchange for the islands of Malta, Gozo, and Tripoli as a fiefdom, the order would supply Charles V with a single Maltese falcon each year on All Souls Day, which would reach him through the Emperor's representative, the Viceroy of Sicily. Charles V was in fact uh, so pleased with the arrangement and the deal that he would end up raising the Hospitaliers German HQ, Heisterschein, into the Principality of Heisterschein, making its Grand Prior, or the Grand Prior of Germany, into a prince of the Holy Roman Empire. The, this new prince of the Holy Roman Empire would hold a seat and a vote at the Reichstag, making him a very influential and powerful man within the Holy Roman Empire. The order would stay in its new home of Malta for 268 years, boosting its local economy and greatly improving its military defences. And this is also why we get the Maltese cross established with the order, that eight-pointed white cross I talked about earlier. Now, at first, the native Maltese islanders were not happy about their arrangement. They were quite mistrustful of the knights and saw them as arrogant invaders, usurpers and fools that enjoyed taking advantage of local women. Most of the order was in fact French, and they held themselves as superior to the native Maltese, preventing them from actually joining the order, and often being dismissive of local nobility. However, despite the rising tension, the two groups were actually able to coexist with little conflict. The order would go on to produce several projects within Malta, these included hospitals, fortresses, watchtowers, churches, and several other communes. French would then go on to replace Italian as the official language of Malta. However, the native islanders maintained their own language. Unhappy to see the hospitaliers recovering their strength, and desiring a new staging area to launch attacks into Europe, Sultan Suleiman sent an invasion force of 40,000 men to Malta in 1565. The 700 knights and 8,000 soldiers mounted a desperate defence in what would be called the Great Siege of Malta. Initially, the Ottomans had the upper hand, with the invasion going well for them. Most of the cities ended up being destroyed, with approximately half the knights being killed. Despite taking uh, heavy losses and losing ground, the defenders kept fighting, with even their wounded taking part in battle after battle. On the 23rd of August, 1565, 
the assault was eventually ground to a halt and slowly pushed back. The careless Ottoman commanders were not using their fleet to its full effectiveness, relying too heavily on their numbers and not enough on clever tactics. This was especially apparent after the loss of their admiral in, in battle on the 23rd of June. With the Ottomans now losing morale and their supplies and ammunition stores running low, and many of their number falling ill, they decided to launch a last ditched attack on the 1st of September. However, the demoralised Ottomans were easily beaten back by the desperate defenders, and at long last, a small force of Sicilians arrived to aid uh, the defenders at Molina Bay. Despite the large force, the Ottomans broke off the siege and left on the 8th of September, and this would mark the last victory the Hospitaliers would see against a numerically superior force with firearms. In 1607, the Grand Master was granted the title of Reichsfest, or Prince of the Holy Roman Empire, and in 1630, he was awarded ecclesiastic equality with cardinals, giving the hybrid moniker his most eminent highness, qualifying him as a true prince of the church, essentially a highly ranked senior cardinal. Now that the Holy Land was seemingly lost to the Christians, most of Europe saw the Hospitaliers and their fellow Catholic military orders as redundant and as such they became unwilling to sponsor them. With little choice, the knights devoted their military assets into a naval force, with the successful defence of Malta and then the victory of the fleet over the, uh, by the Holy League over the Ottoman navy at the Battle of Lepanto in 1571. The knights set out on a new mission to protect Christian merchant ships and free captured Christian slaves. This new campaign became known as the Corso. However, the knights were still suffering greatly financially, and this encouraged many knights to begin raiding and plundering Muslim ships. During this time, the Roman Catholic Church began to lose its power and authority as the religious attitudes of many Europeans changed. This meant that religious armies were seen as obsolete and tribute to the Hospitaliers continue, uh, continued to decline. In response to this, the morale of most of the knights also declined, and many began serving as mercenaries in European navies, in particular that of France. This brought on a vicious cycle of growing complacency and an unwillingness to grant any money to the order, which in turn caused an increase in raids and mercenary work. While the order was able to endure in Malta, it began to lose its holdings in Europe, with the English branch being confiscated in 1540, and in 1789 the order was abolished in France completely when the French National Assembly abolished feudalism. In 1798, nine years after the order had been abolished in France, Napoleon Bonaparte demanded that his ships be allowed to enter the port at Malta. Grand Master Ferdinand von Honkesch zu Wolheim decreed that only two foreign ships would be allowed to enter the port at any given time. Knowing that this rotation would take a long time and leave his ships vulnerable to Nelson's English navy, Napoleon ordered his cannons to fire upon Malta. On June 11, 1798, the French troops disembarked at seven points. After several hours of fierce fighting, the Maltese surrendered, and with no alternative, the Grand Master was also forced to surrender. On July 6, 1799, he resigned his post, having already left Malta on June 18th. The severely weakened uh, order 
dispersed throughout Europe, with most of them settling in Russia. Russian Emperor Paul I, shown here in this image, welcomed the refugee knights into his lands gladly, and eventually the knights would go on to elect the Tsar as their new Grand Master. As you can see here in this uh, image of uh, Paul I, he is in fact wearing the Maltese Hospitalier Cross. This appointment would go on without any form of dispute from Rome, and as such, the appointment was allowed. The order would eventually settle itself in Rome in 1834, and at this time, it would focus primarily on hospital work. And this medical care would continue into the Second World War. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're now coming to the end of the history of the Knights Hospitalier. And as such, I want to talk now about their modern day successors. The first uh, successors of the Hospitaliers I want to talk about is the Sovereign Military Hospitalier Order of St. John of Jerusalem, of Rhodes, and of Malta, aka the Sovereign Military Order of Malta. This is currently the oldest surviving order of chivalry and maintains its internationally recognized sovereign status. It has diplomatic relations with 112 countries and produces its own passports, currency, and stamps, along with its own vehicle number plates. The order consists of 13,500 members, 95,000 volunteers, and 52,000 medical personnel. The second order that I want to talk about here, or rather the second successor order I want to talk about, is the Order of St. John of the Bailiwick of Brandenburg. This is also still considered to be an order of chivalry under the protection of the Federal Republic and with its Herrenmeister, or Lord of the Knights. It has several branches within Europe, as well as the United Kingdom, the United States of America, South America, Africa, Asia, and Australia. Currently, there are three Protestant orders under the umbrella term the Order of St. John, and these form the Alliance of the Orders of St. John of Jerusalem, which was established in 1961. So the last uh, successor order I want to mention here is in fact actually a British successor order, first established in 1831 by European aristocrats who claimed to be acting on behalf of the so Sovereign Military Order of Malta. Now you can see the obvious connection to Britain here in this image depicting their Maltese cross with the uh, lion and unicorn obviously representing England and Scotland respectively. This new order became known as the Most Venerable Order of St. John and received a royal charter from Queen Victoria in 1888. Since then, they have expanded throughout the United Kingdom and the British Commonwealth and even maintained branches in the United States of America. Their best known activities are the St. John's Ambulance Brigade, which is active in both Britain and the Commonwealth, as well as St. John I Hospital in Jerusalem. This specific order maintains a presence in Malta and has done since the 19th century, and in fact, it no longer limits its membership to only Christians. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Thus ends our story of the Knights Hospitalier. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. I do hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, then please remember to like and subscribe for more lore, myths, legends, and stories. I am Shenlong Pendragon, and until next time, knowledge is power.